Hello everyone out there. Welcome to our YouTube channel Finbos Learning. In our previous video, we discussed about asset management companies and saw that there are different types of products which an asset management company offers. Now in this video, we will discuss the first type of product which is cash and cash equivalent in details. So without any further delay, let's get started. Now, what are cash and cash equivalents? So, the line item on the balance sheet that shows the value of a company's asset that are cash or can be instantly turned into cash is referred to as cash and cash equivalents. Bank accounts and marketable securities or debt securities with maturities of less than 90 days are examples of cash equivalent. However, because equity and stock assets can fluctuate in value, cash equivalents frequently do not include them. A collection of assets that a firm owns is called cash and cash equivalents. For the sake of simplicity, goods that are identical to cash are included in the total value of cash on hand. The total of a company's cash and cash equivalents is always displayed on the top line of the balance sheet. Now, cash and cash equivalents are also of different types. The first type is cash. So, money that is in the form of currency such as coins, bills and currency notes is referred to as cash. An account type known as a demand deposit allows money to be withdrawn at any movement without informing the institutions. Checking and savings accounts are two examples of demand deposit accounts. Cash totals contain the balances of all demand accounts as of the date of the financial statements. The next type of cash and cash equivalents is foreign currency. Well, companies that hold multiple currencies may be subject to a currency exchange risk. For the purpose of financial reporting, foreign currencies must be converted into the reporting currency. The conversion should reproduce outcomes that are similar to what would have happened if the company had run its activities in only one currency. Cash and cash equivalents do not include translation losses due to currency devaluation. These losses are included in the accumulated other comprehensive income, financial reporting account. Another type is cash equivalent. Here, investments that are easily convertible into cash are known as cash equivalents. The investment must be made for a brief period of time typically three months or less. An investment should be recorded in the account labeled other investments if it matures in more than three months. Cash equivalents have to be very liquid and simple to sell. These investors, buyers ought to be simple to rich. Thus, cash equivalents must be valued in dollars. Therefore, the market price of all cash equivalents must be known and should not fluctuate. Prior to redemption or maturity, it cannot be anticipated that the value of the cash equivalents will fluctuate significantly. Cash equivalents include, for instance, First is marketable securities. Now, this general word refers to any investment security that can be quickly turned into cash. The examples below include a lot of marketable securities, which businesses frequently group together on their balance sheet. Second is treasury bills. So, these government-issued debt securities frequently have maturities of one year or less and are issued by the US government. Then it includes other short-term government bonds. Any government agency may issue these debt instruments, city, state or federal, when assessing the bond's risk. The government agency's creditworthiness must be taken into account. It also includes bankers' acceptance. Now, a futures contract between two parties is being guaranteed by the bank under this agreement. These instruments consist of a predetermined sum that will be paid to the bearer on a particular day. 
the next is commercial paper so these are corporate short term bonds or debt obligations commercial paper has a 9 month maturity around 270 days the credit worthiness of the issuing company will influence the interest rate on commercial paper it includes money market account so these interest bearing account resembles a saving account in several ways but it frequently has a higher minimum deposits and a few minor account restrictions it also includes a certificate of deposit well depending on the maturity date a certificate of deposit may qualify as a cash equivalent and lastly it includes preferred shares of equity so if the securities are bought just before the redemption date and their value is not anticipated to change much they may be regarded as cash equivalent there are some instances where short term and current asset do not fall within the category of cash and cash equivalents so now we will discuss some exclusions from cash and cash equivalents the first exclusion is credit collateral so if short term debt instruments like treasury bills are being used as collateral for an active loan or line of credit there may be an exemption t bills with restrictions must be submitted separately in other words the ability to convert any of the securities designated as cash and cash equivalents cannot be restricted then the next is inventory so inventory that a company has in stock is not considered a cash equivalent because it might not be readily converted to cash additionally the value of goods is not guaranteed so the amount that will be collected when liquidating the inventory uncertain another one is unbreakable certificate of deposits well certificates of deposit with periods of more than 3 months that cannot be broken fall under the category of cash equivalents that are in the gray financial firms frequently agree to waive interest in exchange for letting the owner of a cd break their financial products the last 6 months of interest is for gone the cd shouldn't be regarded as a cash equivalent if a financial institution forbids this choice this is especially true for longer term products that must be held until maturity such as 5 year cds then prepared assets well prepared assets may be included in a company's current asset section these paid for resources might be returnable prepared assets are not regarded as cash equivalent however due to the possibility that a refund may not be executed in a timely manner or that there may on only be a partial return of funds and the last is accounts receivable even if the invoice is passed late or is about to become due unpaid account receivable balances are not cash equivalent due to the uncertainty surrounding the credit worthiness of the clients there is no assurance the client will be able to pay even if the debt is prepared for collection additionally the business might not be given preference in bankruptcy or liquidation proceedings client debt is therefore not the same as cash so we are discussing cash and cash equivalents together but do you know there is a difference between cash and cash equivalents although cash and cash equivalents are combined in the balance sheet account there are a few key distinctions between the two types of accounts cash equivalents represent ownership of a financial instrument that is frequently linked to a claim to cash whereas cash itself is obviously owned directly direct possessions of money issued by the government is known as cash this could come in the form of actual money coins and bills or virtual money bank account balances cash equivalents are short term investment with limited loss potentially easy liquidity and active markets for speedy settlements These instruments are easily convertible to cash but they are not real claims to cash ownership hence they are given a distinct classification now what is the purpose of cash and cash equivalent a variety of business needs necessitate that companies maintain cash and cash equivalents if a business has cash and cash equivalents on hand it may be used for different purposes 
Firstly, they can be used to pay current debt. So, companies are required to pay invoices and the current share of long-term debts as they become due using cash and cash equivalents. Payment is made with the most liquid assets rather than having to liquidate long-term assets. Then, it can also be used to save for future capital investment. So, companies may have long-term plans for expansion or development and those plans may call for a substantial sum of money. Companies that are risk averse or those aiming to grow in the next year or two might not be willing to put their money into riskier products. As a substitute, retaining cash and cash equivalent is frequently a secure location for businesses to store money they will need in the future. We can use them to plan for emergencies. Well, cash equivalents are the financial instruments that are most similar to actual cash. These products, regardless of whether a corporation holds cash or cash equivalents, may shield a company against adverse business conditions or extended periods of general market unpredictability. Now, we can also use them to meet financial covenants. As part of a loan covenant, a corporation could be obligated to maintain a specific level of highly liquid assets. These covenants may not contain any requirements or limitations on the nature of the financial product. For instance, a loan can stipulate that a business maintains a specific level of cash or cash equivalent. Now, there arises a few questions that are associated with this. Let's discuss them also. The first question is, are cash equivalents better than cash? So, for some investors, cash equivalents are preferable to cash due to a number of advantages. Both classes of financial assets, however, are quite comparable and have low yields. There is not much of a distinction between cash and cash equivalent. So, the next question that arises is, why do companies hold cash equivalents? The yields on cash equivalents are frequently marginally higher. Even purchasing one-month treasury bills could result in yields that are higher than what a business might receive in its saving account. A corporation can hold low-risk investments strategically while trying to preserve purchasing power more effectively using cash yields than with direct cash holdings. So here we have discussed cash equivalents so far. In the next video, we will discuss another type of asset management product in detail. Thanks for watching. Do like, subscribe and share.